Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It's now Monday, November 18th, 2019. I am still in Rodanthe along the North Carolina Outer Banks. Kind of stuck here. Stuck implies that I'm in some kind of distress. I certainly am not. I'm working. I enjoy working. I enjoy being able to do this. I think it's a privilege that I get to follow my passion. And so sometimes getting stuck after a significant impact event such as this is just part of the territory. So anyway, I'm in Rodanthe along the North Carolina Outer Banks. May be able to leave here in the next little while. Some indications are that the roads will be um, accessible enough for a four-wheel drive vehicle like what I have that I will be able to get out of here. I was talking with a local fella, and we tend to agree on that. So uh, beforehand, I did want to produce this update so we can talk about what's happening in the tropics because, yes, we still have activity. That's the Atlantic. We'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, first of all, in the eastern Pacific, we had uh, one tropical storm, Raymond, that went up here. Remnants are now just moving across this area. And then another depression, um, and that's about it. Hopefully that'll be the end of it at this point in time. No other areas are forecast to develop. But in the Atlantic Basin, we do have Invest Area 90L, I believe it is, and it's east of Puerto Rico and the islands, a broad area of low pressure, and it's fairly disorganized overall, but it's trying to get its act together. Hurricane Center saying some gradual development is possible. This is what it looks like on the satellite picture version of the graphical tropical weather outlook, and there's the energy right there. Notice, though, that it's the mid and uh, higher latitudes where most of the energy is, as you'd expect this time of year. But this trying to hold on and give us maybe one more name storm, uh, a depression, a subtropical storm, whatever it ends up being, very little overall impact uh, to land. But the stormy pattern here in the western part of the basin is interesting because it's creating swells that are uh, in higher tides that are impacting areas all the way down to South Florida. Um, the low country of South Carolina, all the way up to the coast of New England. Uh, you know, here's the big storm system that's moved on. Uh, actually, it's probably here. This is another one. It's just busy, busy in the uh, Western Atlantic, most of it mid latitude energy, but we will watch and see what transpires with Invest Area 90L. A moving satellite picture series here in animation shows you what's happening. Here's all the traffic heading off the East Coast with our jet stream energy-based storms with some fuel added from the Gulf Stream and the warm Atlantic. But here is the system, 90L, east of the islands. It's not going to have a direct influence on the islands, but maybe some extra wave energy coming your way. Pretty big storm system out here. Lots and lots of strong upper-level winds, though, cutting across this region. But this convectively coupled Kelvin wave uh, a very fancy term for describing this energy that's moving across. It's not even just the energy. It's more of a, a favorable wave in the atmosphere that leaves more moisture, more cyclonic vorticity behind, maybe less shear. In the true part of the hurricane season, that typically sets off development. And, hey, we did see that in the Pacific there with Raymond. But that's why we're seeing all this right now, this sort of uptick in activity there's just this very short window of favorability uh, that has moved through. For the islands, though, Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, the rest of the folks down here, up to the U.S., British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, points west from there, no problem. This is the frontal boundary coming down with a few showers from that. But anything that develops from this system, I want to emphasize very clearly, uh, as it moves on up and around this area, um, no major impacts for the islands. You don't have to worry about that. As for Bermuda, Bermuda is located right here. This really wouldn't be an impact directly, but all this storminess around Bermuda could bring some inclement weather for that area over the next few days. Just, again, a very active pattern, mostly owed to these high-latitude energetic systems in the jet stream and these temperature contrasts out here. As we get closer and closer to winter, that will become more and more prevalent and we will eventually shut down the tropics down here almost completely, which is what you'd expect to happen. Speaking of mid-latitude energy, we have the storm system that came through. This is a look at the uh, wave energy. This is the GoPro footage that we had. 
Uh, set up a GoPro on a light pole, telephone pole. There's the Atlantic Ocean here. That's the Rodanthe Pier. And look at this big wave that came in. This is yesterday afternoon. There's one little piece of overwash there, or segment, whatever you call it, episode. But then this big wave comes in and uh, really eroded the dunes down there. Very typical out here. This is not something that is a surprise. It doesn't make it any easier. But people down here, they expect this. Okay, I don't want it to be some big sob story. They know. I mean, you build close to the coast, this kind of stuff happens. Wow, look at that. I forgot that that's what happens after a YouTube video finishes. <laughs> All those suggested videos. No, thank you. I'm good. Um, it happens, okay? And we captured it with the GoPro. And also with our unmanned cameras, this is what our digital dashboard looks like that we offer to our Patreon subscribers. But subscriber is not the right word. It's more like a, a family and a cooperative. We all work together. But, you know, anybody that supports our Patreon group, um, I've granted them access to this uh, for this storm event, and this is what it looks like. Our digital dashboard, here's our vehicle cam. You go full screen. This is the house that I'm staying at. Woohoo! And it's funny because literally as I'm recording this, I'm like right up here in that room right there, just so you know. Isn't that cool? I think so. Anyhow, this is what our cameras look like. Here's New Bern, nice and dry now compared to what it was. This is the camera that we set up at the P Island Visitor Center. There's the Atlantic Ocean in the background, the dunes, and this has been scraped. This is why I think we'll be able to get out of here, because we saw the DOT out here scraping this. Good work from them, so that's good. And then uh, our camera in Rodanthe finally ran out of juice or whatever, so it's offline. We've packed it up. Here's our camera that we have up in Kitty Hawk. Nice there, and they never had any overwash at this portion. And then here is just up the road from where I am in Rodanthe. This is Merlot Beach, and this is the breach in Merlot Beach. And luckily, the tide's falling, and so we don't have any water coming down from the ocean right now. And there's some tracks in the sand, as you can see right there. So some vehicles have been coming and going, four-wheel drive. You know what you're doing. You can probably get in and out, but, you know, it's it's not open to the public, put it that way. Uh, we have equipment that's up there, the weather station up on the new inlet. That's what they call it, the new inlet bridge that Hurricane Irene carved. I want to collect that. I want to collect the one uh, from P Island. And we want to get out of here, get home and uh, see what's happening here. There we go. That's the vehicles coming in earlier that I just posted on Twitter. Here's our chat. Uh, and this is what we do. This is what we do on uh, Patreon and our Hurricane Track Insider site. These are the folks that have access to this. I want to give you a little look at that. All right. So the next few days here in the Atlantic Basin, this is the full Atlantic Basin, west coast of Africa there, east coast of North America over here. There's our disturbance. Uh, to the east of the islands, here's our big low pressure area, the nor'easter, whatever you want to call it, coastal storm, moving on out, and you know it gets a little bit intense up there in the Canadian Maritimes, and this system down here, 90L, gets down to about 1009 millibars or so, so it's got a little window of opportunity where it could develop a little bit more, and as we move through the pattern here, it merges with a cold front, and then you see some storminess moves across. Uh, the nation's midsection. I just want to switch out west just for a second. Uh, and lower 48 weather news, we'll go back a little bit to 24 hours out. Look at this. Energy coming up from the tropics down here. Um, Pacific. And some upper level energy is going to dive in. And lo and behold, you guys out west, especially the desert southwest in particular, check it out. Rainy, maybe heavy rain. Higher elevation snows, you bet. Mount Charleston, um, parts of the north rim of the Grand Canyon, parts of uh, southwest Utah, St. George, the mountains in and around there. Maybe some high elevation snow. More importantly than that, moisture. All right, looking forward to that. You need it out west. And just real quick, a glance into the future to Thanksgiving week, which comes up next week. This is what the pattern looks like, according to the GFS anyway. That's Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're talking about eight days out. That's Wednesday, Tuesday into Wednesday. Maybe 
a stormy pattern getting into next Thanksgiving, next Thanksgiving, next week into Thanksgiving. We're going to have to watch this closely because a lot of people would be traveling. You can see the jet stream dipping in here, storm system forming along that. Yikes, that's a big travel week, and we will be paying attention to that as we shift away from hurricane season directly kind of stuff, right? Still, we'll always talk about hurricanes and the upcoming season and what we look for, El Nino, whether or not that'll be in place. Yeah, we always look at that, but I will be focusing more and more on lower 48 weather as we go forward. All right, that is it for me. I'm going to post this and then start packing up and hope to get out of here. I love the Outer Banks, but I got to get home. The family's missing me, and there's work to be done at home. I got a series to produce that we're putting on Patreon. The podcast is coming up. I can't stay on the Outer Banks forever. Sometimes I wish I could. You guys have a great rest of your Monday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow, hopefully from back home in Wilmington.